everybody, welcome to the Local Marana podcast there broadcast he here this Tuesday morning. There we are is. happy to be here. Everybody had a, a fun weekend, yes. a good weekend. And just like that, another episode yeah. is here. And Boom. I'm excited for when we start moving into the Thursday yeah. episodes too, because yeah. now we're going to have this extra piece of, yeah. of fun throughout the week to, to join in on. And we got some cool guests lined up today. You I'm going to plug next Thursday. Yeah. The 25th. Yeah. Dr. Sylvia Lee, supervisor at 3P McCounting. Is going to be here. Right I'm on. really, really looking forward to hanging out with her. That's going to be really cool. Hey, before we go any further, I think we should uh, jump into weather. Okay, what's it's the weather get hot. like? So, uh, so what's going weather on? Weather dude, Scott. <laughs> there he is. Hey. He asked a lot of great questions, and um, what I like to do is I like to geolocate myself. And so, what I'm seeing from my location is right now in Marana. It is a sunny 60 degrees with a high of about 82 today. So, if you're a golfer. Today's a great day to do it. You know, today's just a great day to be outside, I would say. Great day general. to be alive. Yeah. So um, make sure you're enjoying the great weather. It is going to start getting warm by the end of the week. We're going to be hitting the 90s. And um, oh. you know what? Hopefully the wind stays away because I'm not a huge wind fan. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but but wind just kind of throws me off my game. <laughs> well, we were talking about that real briefly about eating out on Friday. You ate out. We ate out. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. We were chasing food all over the parking yeah. lot. Yeah, I watched my salad yeah. go <laughs> flying into the parking lot, yeah. so that was kind of cool. Okay. But what are the what are the temperatures? What kind of hot are we talking about, Scott? Well, you know, uh, you're going to get in the 80s today, but you're going to have some 90s uh, by the end of the week, and um, that's usually when I would want to put myself in the shot, is if I'm talking, <laughs> so that you're not just yeah. hearing a random person and yeah. you're watching you guys go, that, oh, yeah. wow, cool yeah. story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 80s and 90s this week, but uh, it's 60 right now. I would be outside walking my dog if I wasn't in here. Walk truly the living the dream. Living the dream. Living the dream. Yes, yes. You know, uh, weekend recap. I now, what'd you do, David? I went to Sonoida this weekend with the fam bam, loaded up in the car, and we just took a little day trip out there, and we didn't do any wine t wine tasting. My kids are too young. We didn't do any wine tasting. But uh, there's a really cool meat like local meat distributor out there. Um, it's a uh, Vera Eel. So er, Vera Earl, sorry. Let me pronounce, I'm pronouncing it right. But anyways, I got, got meat from there. Uh, it's my second time going there. Bought almost $400 Your worth of meat. Your pops turned you on to that. Yeah, thing. yeah. And it's just real clean, grass-fed, good stuff. And then there was a cafe right next to it called The Cafe. Serving that Serving meat. Serving that meat. And it was delicious. I had a big old burger. My daughter had a burger. Everybody had a burger. Everybody had, had a burger. burger. And it just was it was phenomenal. And then, you know, Sunday just kind of just kicked it. Yeah. What'd you do? Nothing that cool. I did church on Sunday. I, mm. was, I was in the tower for five mm. hours. The tower. Of the power. tower. Um, just chilled. We, uh, we worked Saturday morning. We took Saturday afternoon off. Did some, like I said, chasing food to the parking lot. At, hey, a, a shout out to uh, Street Taco over there in... Coral Valley. Yeah. Really good stuff. Yeah. It was your first time having it? Yeah. I've had it before brought to me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm eating it 30 minutes after it's been fixed, but it was really good. Really good. A lot of wind in the parking lot, but. <laughs> right. It was crazy. But well, it was kind of cool, though, yeah. because it kind of brought everybody out there because there were quite a few people out there. Everybody yeah. was kind of sharing the same experience. So we yucked it up a little bit. You probably ate around the same time I did because right before we went outside, it was fine. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. The weather was good. We're like, oh, let's go. Like, it wasn't like, hey, let's go fight the elements right now. Let's see who wins. It was, let's go outside and eat and have a good time. And then it just, well, we were going to no, Well, I'll shout them out because it's a great place. Uh, the, the, the La Hacienda, we, we like going over there. But, you know, them old people in Oro Valley at about five o'clock on a Friday were packing the place. <laughs> I can I can say that full disclosure I'm one of them so I'm I'm not talking smack about about them but uh uh yeah we chose that it was a good call yeah um and so it was a great weekend the weather was really nice it was a great it, weekend just, for yeah. taxes too what are we talking about taxes it was tax day this weekend wasn't it Saturday Saturday was tax day no when was it. Oh, yesterday was tax day. April 15th? Yeah. Jackie Robinson Day! Well, it's well, tax I think day and Jackie Robinson Day, day are the same. The, are, well, you know, they? I've got my priorities in, in line. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Robinson 42! Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah I couldn't I'm, help I, but uh, I joke. bringing that up. 
So I joke. I saw That's somebody the misery. I saw our good friend Brian Watson post Happy Tax Day on LinkedIn, and I'm like, <laughs> chill out, the saucy buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Don't> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Brian, if you're watching, yeah. you hear this. You know, yeah. I see what you're doing, yeah. man. So I, Brian, I, full disclosure, Brian was an IRS special agent that you know, worked on the Balco case and some other yeah. stuff. And and uh, yeah, he would he yeah. would say that because <laughs> that was his job. Hey, you know, uh, you were talking a while ago about the states, and and you want to share some of that stuff just real quick about what states as far as the taxes with the income tax. Yeah. Anybody want to guess what what was number one? Well, I know you told me. Anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? know? Anybody do, know? Is there anybody do, on the do, chat do, guessing do, what do, the uh, highest tax state is in the United States? It's not California. And always, if you're watching the broadcast, you're welcome to call in. 520-373-2059. 520-373-2059. Yeah. I only know that because David shared it with us. Off, off you got it. You got anything going on in the chat there, Scott? Uh, that's a negative as of right now, but it's early. You know, no people are out, out walking the dog because I just told them to. So now they don't have the, they, <laughs> but they could chat and walk. And so yeah. put the headphones in, put the buds in, guys. No, Come on. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I see Roxanne Ziegler has uh, shared the uh, shout out to Roxanne. She shared the, uh, she shared the, uh, or reacted to it. So she's somewhere out there and okay. The so let's world. go into this. The number one taxed. State place is dun, 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 drum roll. I'm gonna look smart because you gave it to me. <laughs> okay, go ahead, give us it to Jersey. 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 New Jersey. New Jersey, number one. So yeah. So this is from Self Inc. It's a data website. And number one is New Jersey, number two is DC. Number three is Connecticut. Number four is Massachusetts. Number five is New York, and number six is New Hampshire. Uh, wow! So, so, so read those again, real quick, because yeah, the I most think they're taxed, all in this. Yeah, they're yeah. All, Jersey, DC, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, and New Hampshire. They're all kind of in that same little. Yeah, they're uh, all connected. Aren't bubble they? over there, and the least tax state. Can anybody guess what that is? Anybody want to try? I can't because full disclosure. Yeah, you shared it. Yeah. I don't know if Scott knows. Least though. taxed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Florida. Oh, uh, close, uh, close, closest. Uh, Florida is number 47. So, but think in the same part of the, of the country because the state's in the same part of the country that the highest ones are are in. Mm, I'm not good at geography. <laughs> hey, I'm going to fix. I'm going to fix Clint's camera real quick. Oh, we got an intern. Let's make oh, the yeah, intern forgot, do yeah. it. Yeah, his head, his, uh, thank you, interns today. This camera right here, his head is like out of the shot a little bit. So bring it, just bring it out a little bit. There you go. Look at that. And kind of move me a little. There, there you go. Look at that. Where's the applause button? Let's yeah. get, let's get it. <laughs> on. Yeah. Thank woo. you. Hey, we actually, <laughs> we actually have two interns this morning. Yeah. Lovely young couple here. You want to introduce them, Scott? Um, yes. Yeah, so from, from the uh, sweet state of Colorado, we have uh, my son, SR2, uh, also known as Scotty. <laughs> SR2, that's he's so on, cool. He's on the camera today and uh, uh, helps switch it, and we put him right to work. You know, they're both seniors in high school. Kayleen is uh, Scotty's wonderful and sweet girlfriend of like a couple of years now. And um, so we've welcomed Kayleen into the family a yeah. long time ago, and they are seniors this year in the suburbs of Denver, Colorado. And um, this kind of works out great because they need some intern credits. And so we're like, great. <laughs> yeah. Wake up early while yeah. you're on vacation yeah. and let's come uh, staff hey, a camera. Glad you guys are here. Yeah. Lovely couple. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah. Thanks for being I'm already here. lobbying that they maybe uh, attend college in Southern Arizona. Yeah. Good I'm going to lobby pretty hard on that, by the way. I'm, I'm not going to let go. Yeah. All right, Scott. So la the least tax state is West Virginia. Mm. And then following close is Louisiana, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Florida. So now think about, just for a second, this was yeah. all new to me. Yeah. You, you shared this morning. Geographically, they all kind of line up. There was yeah. one in the lower one that didn't match, uh, West Virginia and Ohio. Oh, uh, 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 um, Oklahoma's kind of. Oklahoma, more central. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so let's get into some pretty staggering numbers in regards to 
well, they're the most taxed. What does that mean? Right. What are we going to do? So uh, according to this website, the average lifetime earnings in New Jersey is $1,818,191. So that's a lifetime earning. Uh, you, you go, how wow, much again? 1818000 So almost $2 million. Yeah. So, I mean, if wow, you, that's not much. Yeah. It? Doesn't that kind of blow your mind? Like, you know, people that have made that in a year. Yeah. A lot of people make that. Yeah. You look at sports, sports over, over a 40 and, year period, man, that's especially for that part of the world, you'd think yeah. it'd be yeah. twice that much. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're taking it into a lot because, I mean, you're sure, you're sure you're dealing <coughs> with, you know, you're bringing in the folks that are not making much. Yeah, but, uh, to, and I know apples, oranges, but to compare, like, our demographic here, Marana is 96. Mm, uh, average. Yeah. Um, average. Uh, and, but that's household. So I guess well, that put it right on par then. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the number. I was questioning it at first because hmm. I'm like, well, well, give them like the that bad much. news. That that doesn't that's that's bad enough. But, yeah, here's here's so the worst part. So let's the say average you, person's averaging about a fifty thousand over a forty year span. Right. Not quite, but pretty right. close. But so the, the bad news yeah. is So let's say you make that one million eight hundred and eighteen thousand. Well, the percent of your earnings taxed in New Jersey is fifty four point three percent. More than half of what you make is taken by the man. And so you would end up paying nine hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars of your money wow. into taxes in New Jersey. That's a family surviving on <clears throat> forty grand real money. Mm hmm In Jersey. In Jersey. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, <sighs> Connecticut's not too far behind it. It's at forty nine point four percent. Uh the the lifetime earning average there is one million seven hundred and thirty one thousand. You know, and their the lifetime taxes you'll pay is eight hundred and fifty five thousand dollars, and so here just some perspective for Arizona because you're like, well, we're in Arizona, we don't care about that much. Let's let's hear about Arizona. Arizona is actually pretty low on the list. So as far as ranking, Arizona is wait for it, number twenty eight. So, so we're kind of right in that halfway right. halfway mark, and uh, California was a lot lower than I thought it would be. California's number nine. I thought California was going to be in the top five, but it's number nine. Uh, but so go back to Arizona. So yeah, just you, out of curiosity, give yeah. us give us the the, the breakdown on California, uh, how much made and how much taxed. Okay, California uh, average is one million five hundred eighty nine thousand less than Jersey. Yeah, this really. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't know how accurate. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. A, it's to use the percentage. And what percentage? In the, it is. Uh, Forty one point five percent. So okay, if you make outrageous. one million five hundred eighty nine thousand, they're gonna tax you're gonna get taxed six hundred and fifty nine thousand. I guess why I'm surprised by the California number is there are so many it's such a big state, a lot of people, maybe that brings it, the average down, but there's so many people in California that make a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean a real high end you'd think they'd drag the number up a little higher than <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah, and we don't I mean Where you what what's your source there? Just for yeah, full it's disclosure. Uh, self ink. Okay, it's what it's called. Um, and then, so Arizona, the average is one million four hundred and forty three thousand dollars. You're looking at lifetime taxes of four hundred seventy thousand of that at a rate of thirty two point six percent. It's still outrageous, isn't it? It's almost a third of what you make. Because you mentioned a while ago how many times you get taxed <laughs> yeah, during so, the course of a day. Yeah, I was trying to find that out. I'm like, all right, so let's sit here and break it down. How many ta times do we get taxed throughout the day? So when we start our day, right, we get up. You probably, If you shower at night or you shower in the morning, right, you're going to use products that you bought at the store that you got taxed on. So you're already, you're already feeling that because you're using the goods that you bought and that were taxed on. You're using your water getting taxed on that, right? So then you're going to put on your clothes that you got taxed on, and depending where they came from, there was probably some tariff fees and what else, or whatever else on that. And then, let's say you hop in your car, right? Well, you're paying a tax on that car with your registration and stuff just to drive it on the road. And then let's say you gotta go get gas. Well, now you gotta go get gas, so now you're gonna get taxed on that. Let's say you grab some goods out of the, the gas station, now you're getting taxed on that, right? And, then and get, keep in mind, <laughs> <laughs> the, the constant tax yeah. of electricity, yes. your phone, mm -hmm. your cable, right? those are never-ending. I mean, you're just yeah. getting taxed on those 24-7, 365 
around the clock. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And then, you well, know what I appreciate about those stats is with all those opportunities to be taxed at every turn, what we've been able to do is make society perfect. <laughs> we've been able to use those funds <laughs> wisely. And now society is just uh, milk and honey at all times. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why we're talking about it, Scott, yeah. because how great it is, right? Getting taxed. Um, hey, we're not ready for it yet, but now would be a perfect time to queue up the new uh, commercial that you're oh. you're building. Right? Oh, yeah. not, we're, we, it's not ready. We, I'm just teasing well, we're not you, a, but we're not we're not official, <laughs> so we can't do that. <laughs> Forgive me on that, but uh, if you know, you know. If you don't, it's yeah, okay. I'm yeah, just saying yeah. we're not official. We're, we are official, right? Yeah. We, you, anybody can be official. Yeah. You know, you're you wanna, official, David. Yeah. You want to be an official clown? Go there ahead. You, you want to, you know, it, it. You do you. Anyways, it's back to the tax thing, right? So we're we're going to our job, which we all know that the gov takes a big chunk of that. So you go to clock in throughout your day. You know that when we were walking before the this the session, we we're like, all right, let's just say in perspective. And you lived in New Jersey, you made twenty bucks an hour. Well, technically, you don't. You make like eight. You you make a. You nine take bucks home an nine, but <laughs> yeah. you're still getting taxed on that nine <laughs> yeah. every time you purchase something. Right, right. So you that in, you know, you yeah. know, so it's it, a, and we're not even talking about sales tax yet. Just yeah. in general, yeah. right? The different percentages, yeah. like you know, it, it's you know, I have always but, felt, always, always, always felt this as a kid. I'm like payroll tax to me. That is the biggest. It's the scam. biggest scam I ever heard. Oh my gosh! Of. I mean, pay, pay. You're being, you're being. Taxed for your labor? You remember hearing the state where they raised it during COVID? It's insane. To help pay I never for the understood emergency? that. Oh my god! And then not only are you being taxed as a laborer mm-hmm. or an employee, right? Your your employer's being taxed for your services, right? Yes, so exactly. So keep that in mind. You, you're paying what? New Jersey, you're paying fifty three percent. Yeah. Well, your employer's it, paying. Yeah. Your employer's paying probably half that. Mm-hmm. So uh, of the of the money you're earning, really. The government's really taking about because they're having to pay on top of that. Yeah, they're they're making about seventy. They're they're netting seventy five percent. My argument is you did nothing to earn this. Yeah. Now my plan can't work. Here's the reality. Here's the reality. No, it can't work. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it will. It will, flat rate. it will decimate the the system as we know it. You pull it out. How many people make their living in America off taxes? A lot. Uh, I think it's most. There's more people in. Well, there's more people roles in bureauc- than, they're, they're absolutely than, than in, in private. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That's a fact. Yeah. So, but if you just think about tax preparers, all of our good friends at the IRS, Brian Watson included. I'm, yeah. Th- so you can't you can't stop that. If you pulled that plug on that right now, it would it would crash. Yeah. We would crash and burn immediately. But there has to be more of a. I'm, I'm a, a pick a number. Yeah. Whatever the number works. And everybody kind of is in that 15 to 20 range. So let's right. say 15 to 20. Mm-hmm. Everybody pays 15 to 20. Yeah. I don't care. That's even. Everybody pays the same amount. That yeah. means everybody's got equal stake. If you're making 20 bucks an hour, you pay 17%. If you're making 2000 an hour, you pay 17 We all have the same. So what are you doing at the municipal level, though? <sighs> well, we're talking payroll taxes. Oh, we're just talking just payroll, payroll okay. taxes. I got you. I'd even go one step further. Again, this can't happen overnight because the system is so it's so baked into what's going on. We can't this there's no quick there's no quick fix here, folks. Yeah. No matter what I don't care. Politicians are gonna stand up and they're gonna talk about you can't fix this overnight because it didn't happen overnight. Right. And to pull this would be basically just chopping the heart out of it. But um, a a flat a, a sales tax of and to me, this would be based on, they do it already in a lot of, uh, uh, like, tobacco, alcohol have to higher tax rates than a lot of other stuff does. Yeah. So, and that kind of makes sense because there are repercussions for some of these behaviors. Um, but more of a tax of, like, um, if you can afford and you want to buy a $250 million yacht, Maybe that tax is a little, a little higher than somebody that's buying a second car so their kid can get to work or get to school. Yeah. Fair enough. Right, right. So you say that number, $250 million, and it's so crazy to hear. Well, I saw one the other day, and it was cool. <laughs> that the average is like a you know a million eight hundred thousand. Yeah. That no, that bothers me, man. That that bothers yeah. me. And then half of it's going to go bye-bye. 
Like it, it, it's, it's to me, it's just, it's part of the whole, and we've talked about it before on the unrestricted free agent yeah. podcast that we have shameless plug on that. But yeah. if you're looking to learn some stuff and, and try to make some moves, go listen to that on Spotify. It is behind a small paywall. Reason being is it is an educational program and we have to, we have to charge on it, but it really, that opened my eyes. But then hearing this, it kind of just, you talk about that conveyor belt, right? Like, Hey, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to just get in line and go out there and get debt. We're not even talking about the debt factor in that, right? The $19 trillion right. that the consumers are in credit card debt. Yeah. Not so to mention the government of <laughs> debt of $32 trillion. Yeah. So those just, aren't even real numbers though. I, Honestly, I mean, they are. Yeah. But when I, nobody's paying those back. Yeah. So what happens then? Though? Well, just you know, we do just we keep, keep taxing it. more we to, kick, to keep accommodate kicking, it? Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Right. So what we have to do as a society, we have to, first off, we're going to have to make some tough choices. And I, I, honestly, at my age, I don't have to make these tough choices, mm-hmm. but they do. Yeah. These young, you you do. Mm-hmm. You guys have to make some serious choices, um, and it's not going to be easy. I yeah. don't think it'd be easy, but I don't think it's impossible either. Yeah. You, you know, just got to start slowly bringing it back and right. qu- quit some of this stupid stuff we're doing. <laughs> like Scott said, I mean, we're living in a utopia um, or should be at the at the prices that we pay because that's what we're doing. And a lot of it's just the dumbing down of the citizenry that no one and, – and busy and running and watching TV and TikToks in your face and – uh, personal responsibility has to play a big role in this. Yeah, it's it's always an interesting thing, thing I've seen too is when new tax law is brought in or, or new tax rates are brought in, it's very, very rare that you see them pull it back. <laughs> hey, we need this for – we need this tax rate for we're building something or we're going to do this so we can take care of – you know, the fentanyl issue. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, that Let's say they use that as, as an instance, right? Well, they they raise the rate, the tax rate to, to accommodate that situation. But when that situation disappears, for one, no one really ever knows that it disappears or stops. And the tax rate just stays the same and the money keeps getting collected. And people are really just kind of blind to it by the distraction yeah, that you talk about. Yeah. Just everyday life. Yeah. We're all busy. You got to get your kids to the yeah. next practice and you got to, yeah. you know, work extra and whatever. But like, those tax rates don't come back. You don't ever hear the yeah. news going, oh, no. oh, yeah, they're no. pulling back the yeah. tax rate. How exciting is yeah. that? Everybody's going to have a little bit more money in your pocket. Hey, you're depressing me, David. I'm sorry. Can we go back to yes. Jackie I just, Robinson Day? I just I mean, April celeb- 15th hey, is Jackie Robinson's Day, baby. celebrating tax day, yeah. man. It's the one of the greatest holidays of the year, yeah. right? I mean... I mean, it's, it's and you know what's ironic. This, I say all this. I just want to cover. I'm doing this like sarcastically, yeah. kind of, but it's also an educational piece. Like, I'm trying to work on educating, uh, educating, but informing. positively informing and influence influencing people, especially in like my but, age but, bracket. Because but David, here's your problem. I can't even. I don't have this conversation with a but lot. You know of people. why? Because they don't understand what you're talking about. That's why we're here They're talking just throwing, about. Oh, I'm, yeah. Here's what. It, this is crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People get all excited about a tax refund. Yeah. They get excited. And the first thing I think when they are, I'm like, how much, how much interest See how did much you, went out? Though. How much interest? No, they don't, I mean, they're, <laughs> no, they're they money. Yeah, they don't how know. How much interest did you get back from loaning, for loaning the government, who's broke, by the way, 32 billion or trillion in debt? Yeah. How much interest did you earn on your money? I'd rather owe the government a thousand None. than be, get a thousand back. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Because at least on the thousand, if I owe them, I had an opportunity during the course of the year to maybe earn money yeah. on that thousand. Try to go as close to zero as yeah. you can. Yeah, you try to yeah. go as close to zero as you can. And I and I have friends that are like, oh, I went exempt for six months and now I owe ten grand. You're yeah. like, well, that's mm-hmm. not. What well, we're that's saying. not. Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> not do what that. we're saying. Don't do that. That's Don't do that. That's not what we're saying. So it's, uh, I know it was, I, I'm sorry, it was kind of a downer talk, but I'm just trying to educate, and yeah, I, you know, but yeah. we're going to get into more fun stuff because we have we some Gabe cool stuff coming, up. coming on and it looks like we're going to go to ad break. So when we come back, we're going to have Gabe here with us, uh, is to cover time? Miranda foodie. Beautiful. He is the owner and operator of the blacktop grill here at Cortero and Thornydale in Northwest Tucson. We, I consider it Miranda just cause I so want it, but yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Hey, there we are. <laughs> there we are. We're back. <laughs> We're back. There we are. Look at there. Gabe. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Welcome aboard, Welcome, man. buddy. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful day. In yes, it is. Marana and Texonia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott, my shot is particularly just weird. So I don't know. I agree. I'm that. gonna have I'm gonna have our intern. <laughs> we can go room shot for a little bit. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna yeah, have go our intern shot. short sort that out while I get you in the room and uh, so SR2. Kaylee. He's on it. He's on He's it. He's on it. Awesome. Good morning, Marielle. Yeah, Marielle's we got, here we with got us. A, we got a room full <laughs> this morning. There we go. That's looking pretty tight right there, bud. Yeah, and I you like can that. you can pull the mic a lot closer to you, Gabe, just so we can hear you a little okay. better. Yeah. So the, so the listeners can hear you, too. Welcome, man. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, brother. Feeling good. Feeling healthy. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining us. It's, Thank uh, you. It's nice to have you. Nice to change it up. You know, we're, we're new at this live thing, and we're still working out a lot of kinks. You guys sound like pros, man. You could have <laughs> fooled me. Like, yeah, I was yeah. you guys out. Like, sounds good. Like, yeah. You guys been doing it a while. Yeah. I, well, we've what, been, we're on 500 now? No, Somebody have to jump in 300 episodes. <laughs> no, I meant total episodes as far it. as a whole. Yeah, yeah, it goes like significantly. <laughs> no, he's pretty. I think we're pretty close to that, actually. Just, we were well into the 400s before. Yeah. Before we kind of quit counting. Yeah, and I was including the uh, all other people. I'm still uh, not a fan of my shot there, um, but it's cool. I like it. it. We'll do it. We'll deal with it. But Gabe, so you're the owner of the Blacktop Grill. Proud owner. Tell yeah. us, tell us about this place. What what made you do it? Why yeah. did you do it? And how has it been for you the last couple of years? Oh man. Well, why did I do it? You know, just really, I started and... Pull your mic in just a yeah, little bit closer. It just, you know, I just really wanted to be my own boss. Really, that was the ultimate goal when I first started it. Yeah. So I bought a little food cart held together by Band-Aids and <laughs> duct tape. And, and, and you think I'm joking, but it was like, really, like, it was that, right? And so my ultimate goal was just to kind of get out of the man and... In two years, I accomplished that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was hey, amazing. Hey, that's a, Thank you. Yeah. That's a victory right there. Now, I mean, give itself. you perspective. Now I'm heading into year 10, right? But I still remember that day of walking away, the excitement, the nervousness. I mean, and now, like, you know, like, it's, it's pretty amazing because now I have bigger visions for the mm -hmm. future of where we're at right now. You know? See, 10 years in, you're done. You, you couldn't go back. To the lifestyle you Absolutely were in before, not. he's nah. been he's been <laughs> he's been doing it. Nah. We've talked Absolutely about this not. a couple. As a matter of fact, a couple of years in, I'm like, you're we, you're done. Yeah, you you I'm either got to make done. it or break it on oh, your own now because yeah, there's no done, way. Man. Once you taste that freedom, yeah. And 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 for anyone that doesn't understand what we're talking about, freedom, it's a freedom uh, unique to. I would almost I don't want to be sacrilege here, Bring it. but almost a spiritual level of. 100%. Uh, freedom. I agree. Is that fair enough yes, to say? Sir. Both of you are spiritual men, so yeah. you know where I'm kind of... Yeah. It's not that level. Let's not get crazy. No, but, it's that level. But I it's, think it's, fair it, it, it's, it's yeah. pretty close. Yeah. It's fair. It's I, I, I've heard this thing one time, right? And I kind of live by it. It's like, i much rather work 100 hours for myself than 40 hours for yeah. someone else. So, yeah. You know, I feel like... One hour for someone else. One hour for something. Yeah, I still do, right? Like yeah. in, a, in a humble sense. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, I work for a lot of people, you know. Well, you work for all of your customers. That's right. And I don't even, I, I, right. I hate to even use that word. I was, I used that word yesterday to describe a situation. And I, I wish I could guest, family, mm -hmm. maybe is a better word. Mm -hmm. We used to have a sign in a bakery and it said, enter as, enter as uh, guest, leave as family. Love it. You know, and that's kind of how you feel because they're your board of directors. They're your without them you got what do you got you got a cart you got a you got a grill right. you got and a I'm, counter I'm standing there modeling <laughs> <laughs> well you got your built-in photographer so you yeah. do have that yeah one of the best content creators <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, no, I'm a lucky guy. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah man, getting lucky all the good guy. moves yeah, getting yeah, you to yeah. dance a little bit on camera oh, I've hey, seen God. those that's one I thing I try to share those in particular when I can't yeah, just oh man <laughs> I know she probably was pulling teeth for that to happen huh hey is this I mean I know I got the moves. <laughs> you just gotta but let to it show loose. it to the world. Yeah. It's like a little yeah. Can we share this? And I know Bring there's Marielle. Yeah. The one thing the three of us, and I'll throw Scott in this mix, and I'm gonna throw uh, SR2 into this mix as well. The key behind what we're doing is the women that, that we're doing life with. Mm -hmm. We could not, I could, I know I could not do what I do if I wasn't married to Tammy. Yes, sir. And I don't believe you could, and I don't no. believe you could. Absolutely no, not. No, not a chance. 100%. No. So it's the people you surround yourself, starting with 
yeah. your your significant other would be the key to this. Not to say you couldn't do this by yourself. Uh-huh. But why would yeah, you want yeah, to? That doesn't sound fun at it all. It wouldn't be yeah. right. It wouldn't be as as fun. Now I know you guys just to kind of drift a little bit. I know you guys are in separate businesses. Uh, mm-hmm. She's quite the entrepreneur herself. Yeah, uh, that's right. But do you compare notes once a week or once a month? Like a you- lot of stuff, man. Like really, like it, 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 it's it's pretty basic foundational stuff. So yeah, like it, when we do tr- come right, exactly. So it doesn't matter the type of business. So when we do speak, it's it's a lot of the same. <clears throat> I, for lack of better term, headaches and yeah. and, and challenges, yeah. you know. So when we talk with, we're it's kind of we're able to keep on that same page and same realm, regardless of the business. The business, because right. I've been with a few groups of business uh, operators, all of us in different realms and mm-hmm. different businesses. But you could gleam so much from a printer like Anton over here. Yeah, because at the at the core, like you said, the foundation, our our challenges, our struggles right. are are really similar. That's it. Because yeah. they're extra, they're external. They're not really internal. You know right. what you want to do, yeah. Right. But the external pushback, either from bureaucracy or uh, vendors, all the above, is 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 all the are the issues, right? All the above, yes, sir. Because have you noticed yeah. that you work at a different level now that the people around you work at? Yes. You operate and you think at a different level than yes, the uh, the other people think. Yes, at. sir. I and do. I'm talking, yeah. I'm talking the whole package yes. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thankful, and I, and I think people who experience it, if they if if they start building their own business, right? Like you got to know that, and and you just start seeing differently. You start seeing opportunities in places where, you know, ten other people tend to miss out. I said the other day, and here we were talking. I wish there were was a simulator. Mm-hmm. Somehow we could simulate business, mm-hmm. and it was kind of like everybody should own or operate a small business for a couple of years yeah you we we would you know the problems we're having now we were talking taxes yeah those problems would go away if everybody had to could be blessed to do what we do yes sir because you look at things through a different lens than you did 10 years ago is that fair enough two years ago one year ago yeah i mean you know it's a constant evolution really you know so i just kind of keep an open mind and i don't claim to have it figured out but (laughs) You know, it just, it's, it's always, it's constant change. And I think where I went now is like, I kind of keep an open mind to it and, and, and kind of flow with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of fight it. And you know, what's fun. You guys probably agree that first year or two. Now it's so long ago (laughs) for me that I first ventured out. I'm talking 40 years ago, but that first feeling like you're, I'm top of the world, of the baby. Company. I've got my <laughs> business cards. Back in the day, I'm carrying my briefcase, and you find out real quick that doesn't really mean anything. Nah, it's just the, it's the beginning. It's, it's just the start. You it's know what? The, the first start. thing he did as the official CEO of Live the Dream Media, the first thing he did, you popped a bottle of. Champagne. Oh, wish. Wish. You bought a good gold <laughs> grill nah, for I your wish, teeth. Man. Nah. <laughs> Tell him what you did. I David. mopped. I had to mop. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> I walked in here. Yeah, 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 that sounds about right. I walked there in here. Like and and he, had, he was mopping. We had a little yeah, rainstorm and a little monsoon. I looked over yeah. and David's mopping, and I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no one asked him to. No one suggested to him. He did it on his own. You're a winner. Yeah. I, yeah. It hadn't been done. I mean, at that point, you're just kind of like, well, how's this going to How's this gonna work? In a nutshell. Yeah, <laughs> you man. You got to yeah, do yeah, everything, like, right? Yeah, I got to mop. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So You know what he still does? He still mops. Every yeah. now and then. Yeah, Although we got a couple of inter- interns, we oh. may we may train them for corporate <laughs> leadership someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah be, right be, ready yeah. be ready to mop. Be ready to mop. Yeah, be ready to mop. No, that's a humbling thing, right? Like yeah. when somebody. That's a cool story. I'll probably tell my grandkids one day. You know, like, hey, mm-hmm. what'd you do when you first became, you know, your own your own business and did you know jumped into that world. I mopped. I grabbed the mop. And I grabbed the mop. Going at it. Right. <laughs> it wasn't it's like, like right. yeah, I sat in my chair where I had my little nameplate that said, you know, blah, blah, CEO or whatever. Yeah. David. No, it wasn't. Yeah. But his little it pins in like the that. holders. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, man, if I learned anything through this venture, it's all the little stuff that adds up that gets you to the big stuff. Really. The compounding. The compounding. Compound and that just means like mopping and. You know, all yeah. the above. It, yeah. it all adds up. You know what I mean? And, and, and Can I ask you a question? Yeah, now, and I'll, I'm asking both of you. I'm listening. I'm going to fix his mic stand. How, 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 how what, what, did someone model that for you? Or did you, 
did you acquire it through osmosis? Did you? Because for for me, mm-hmm. I had it modeled mm-hmm. when I was a young guy, just getting into the real world. I had some really starting with my parents, uh, but I had some. I'll, I'll call out a couple of names. Don Medley was a guy that that I worked for in college. Um, he really modeled that. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, I I might own this, and he owned everything. Yeah. But he he was washing dishes and he was mopping floors and he just so how did there had to be a little bit of modeling but how did that how did you guys get to that point where you mopped a floor without anybody telling you I mean I don't know I think it's just a different I think it had to do a lot about how we were raised I don't, I'm not speaking for you but like how I was raised but uh, there's there's something when so I grew up with a hunger. Right, and I'm not saying like I was like hungry to mm-hmm. to to eat or anything like that, which we'll jump into. But that's food. involved, right? Yeah, but that's that that a involved. big thing of it. No, when I talk about the hunger, is you know, growing up and stuff. My parents were really really young, so we didn't. There wasn't a lot of money and stuff going on. You mm-hmm. can't couldn't really get. You know, I saw a lot of my friends and stuff growing up doing things that I couldn't do, and it just came to money, right? Mm-hmm. Like I remember a lot of weekends growing up that my friends were going to go, you know, to an arcade or they were going to go do certain things and I just couldn't do it. Or if I did yeah. do it, I was like spending the little bit of money I did have in my pocket to go and do that. Yeah. And I just hated that feeling. Mm-hmm. And um, there wasn't anything I could do at that time to, to, to change that. Yeah. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, but I always had in my head and I'd see how hard my dad would work and my mom would work. And I started seeing the change right for them. Like yeah. we did start getting money and the, you see the change of where we came. Cause we grew up on the West side. Okay. Uh, and, we ended up when my parents were able to, we moved out of it. And it was like, it was a big change for our family because mm. that place was a mess, man. It was this crime riddled area and we moved out to the suburbs. So you get to feel that yeah. the change. So for me, it's like, why well, I, I want to be that change now for, for mm. my family. Now, like, how do I change that? Well, yeah. for me, like working in and working for the government, I felt like there was just a roof. There was a cap. Like this is yeah. as good as you can get. And lack of freedom. And lack not of only freedom. a roof, but somebody telling you precisely what you. Yeah, there's how a do, lot of you feel your day. And there's a lot of problems in bureaucracy with freedom. Yeah. And one of them is like, you know, for me, I would see some officers, you know, even throughout the U.S. doing stuff on social media, and I'd hear people talking bad about like them doing that stuff. But I'm like, see, that's the problem. Mm. You think because of what you do that they shouldn't be doing that, mm. but they can express themselves. There's nowhere in the contract or anything where it says you're not allowed to live. Sure. Right. So yeah. like seeing that kind of stuff, you know, fired me up even more. Yeah. Right. Because I remember I was just talking to somebody here locally. There was an email sent out to people who work for government here locally. And it was like, you're not allowed to do this and this while you're on duty. It's yeah. like, where does that constitutionally come into play? Where is that in law? Right. right? So some like people controlling things. So yeah. for me, it's like, well, I get to step out of that. There's, 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 pl- there's, con- there's cons and pros or pros and cons to it. Mm-hmm. Right. So what well, was a con mopping possibly, but it's also, yeah. Hey, this is where you're at. You have to take care of business on your own. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So how, I mean, how do you, where did you learn it? Like, and I guess just so I'm understanding, we're talking about like, like I guess just mopping, right? Yeah. Like well, the, or, the fundamentals, or, or the right? fundamental, yeah, exactly. Yeah. How do you come into there with that discipline? Because you, know, you like, can't, you can't just who, do did it. Did someone model that for you? I've did always, you just, you? It was just there. I mean, no, no, no. I'm a work in progress, man, and I'm hard with you. Yeah, <laughs> every day, every day, you know. And I wish I could always say like I had this clear vision and and this worth ethic, but that was never the case. It was something I had to like grow and learn and. And kind of apply every day, and I'm still applying it. Are you, you guys listening saying? over there? Right, because this is this is yeah, what we're, yeah, this yeah. is real talk right so now. So on that sense, I was <coughs> I was always hungry, man. Like where I'm from, you know, I'm from Yuma, and and it's funny you guys mentioned that you bring this up because kind of like the West Side Story, right? I'm from Yuma, so when I was growing up, man, like in my neighborhood, it was normal to go to a friend's house and them live in a shack. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this. Yeah. Absolutely normal. Like, you didn't think about it. Like, we walk in, we play. You're happy to be there. And But looking back, it was normal, like, <laughs> man, to live in a shack. Now, let me add to that story. So there's different perspectives for me growing up. Right? And it called, this is all intertwined, so I'm not trying to veer off here. But I, I talk about this all the time. So up the street, I had a group of friends that all lived in this these apartments. Right? Nice apartments. They were very well kept. We lived up the street. We are at our house, our humble little house. And 
I was like, man, I want to live over there with them. You know, I was like, man, they're all in that same block and everything. Later on in life, man, I figured out it was government housing. Yeah. So we were actually the lucky ones because <laughs> we had a home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just to add to that, one more thing to that, there was a, a, a neighbor across the street. Every day they get pizza, right? And they were getting pizza every day. And I'm like looking at my parents like, I want pizza every day. <laughs> Come to find out his parents didn't cook. And my mom's in the kitchen cooking. You know what I the mean? The good so, chef, too, boom, right? The good yeah. stuff, yeah. too, right? Now yeah. you would like appreciate if I ate pizza every day, I'd be sick of it. Although we eat it every other day, man. Don't get me wrong. I love pizza. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it was it's it's a different perspective, right? And so I've just always been hungry. Mm-hmm. And I've always worked my excuse my French. I've always worked my ass. Yeah. You can cuss on here if you want. Thank it's not you. FCC yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hey, no, get I'm, the, a, get I'm a the, uh, person. button ready there, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting ready to go rogue on you, man. Oh, he's going hood. He's going hood. He's going hood. He's going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And I've always been hungry, dude. And and I think it's it's a very well put when when you start working smarter and not harder. Yeah, amen. It gets easier. But you also realize those mopping the f- things like mopping the floor yeah. is foundation to it all. You know what? Honestly, my my hum- my background's pretty humble. I yes, mean, I, 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 but we had our own baseball diamond in the backyard. My brother and I. My parents built us a little league field in the backyard. <clears throat> How cool is that? that is pretty, so cool. pretty modest That's little amazing. house. We, yeah, we grew up in the country. We had some nice houses. Mm-hmm. We had some trailers. We had some shacks. Mm-hmm. We were kind of in the middle. But my parents were born in in the depression, and they were hungry. Yeah. Especially my mom. My dad yeah. was. A, I always get kin him to a bass player in a band. Yeah. He he actually was a lead guitar player yeah, and a great singer. But his role in life was he was a bass player. He kept it all together. Right. He always knocked down the jobs, always pastored at a church. But my mom, for the lack of a better example, was the brains of the operation. Not that he was, yeah. she sure. just knew, but she was hungry. Love it. Just hungry from a child. She bought her first house when she was 17 years old. Wow. wow. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> so we all have yeah. something in common then. It's and that you know hunger. What? That, hunger. What I was going to say man. is I think you're born with it or it's modeled to you at a young age. Yeah. Because if you look at your stories, all three of us had different backgrounds, different locations, different yeah. time frames. Mm-hmm. But we were hungry early on and to do something else, in my case, it was modeled for me by my my parents. Yeah, Yours, it sounds like it was, too. Your mom and dad's busting it. You guys are busting it over there. Thank you. So it, I think we're born with that to some degree because I'm one of four siblings. They've yeah. all been su- extremely successful. Yeah. But it, in different realms. But I'm, sure. I'm the hungriest. I'm yeah, the most, it. like, getting after it kind of, whereas they were just smart. Yeah. And I... I are you the only entrepreneur in your? Yes, yeah. without yeah. Gotcha. My sister's a doctor, got every degree on the in, yeah. the in the book. My brother is an engineer, got every degree in the book. My little sister is um, got every degree in the book. Musically gifted, mm-hmm. she's a great uh, financial. She really understands finance, which is from my father, which I understand. But yeah, I'm by I'm the only one in my in my siblings. Now my mom's family mm-hmm. is full of entrepreneurs. Everybody had a business of some kind, wow, uh, which is really cool. My one of my uncles, who's deceased, actually created all the original welding equipment that NASA uses in building space labs and stuff. Wow. Are you are you the only entrepreneur? Um, do, do you let have me, siblings? Let me go down the, yes, I have. I'm the oldest of six. Okay, I met so, your youngest brother yesterday. Yeah, he was in uh, town from Chicago. Yeah, help me yeah. with his name. Is it, his name is Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in town from Chicago visiting the family, so you know we got together and so, yeah. Um, yeah, no, everybody has has their careers, and they're all killing it at their careers, and you know, I just always kind of known that I was gonna do my own thing. I tried a bunch of different things. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I don't think I had the mindset at the time. Now it's you know it's a little different and, mm-hmm. and, and a little more direction, a little more. Yeah. You know what I just direction. noticed? We're all the oldest of the siblings. Yeah, yeah that's what I was trying to lean into. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to figure that out because I wonder if there's something with that too. Yeah, man. So I mean that too. So I mean, like, and this kind of all intertwines again, right? So I'm the oldest of six, 
And our house was tiny, two bedroom, one bathroom. Wow. Three bedroom, excuse me, man. Learning how to so, share a lot early. Oh man. And being no the idea. oldest, she was kinda you were kind of the trendsetter, right? You, you kinda had well, the, you know, I don't mean man, trend, I was a, I was a <laughs> young lad. You know, I wasn't the smartest <laughs> of people. You know, I wouldn't say that, you know, but it it, it was there was a lot of I mean meals with like six kids. Imagine feeding that. So, you know, it's yeah. My mom would like make a lot of starches, and I talked to her. God bless her soul. You know what I mean? Um, she would like pile these tortillas on and make these like enchiladas that you've never seen, like a cake style, so that we fill up. And it probably wouldn't work because we were still sitting there like hungry, but you know, we were, we were still alive to this day. So she did a great job, you know, and my, yeah. both my parents did raising us. And, yeah. And, but yeah, so when you have that many kids, you know, obviously, like, it's life's a little, you, you have a little less than a lot of people. You know what I mean? And But you have more of the good stuff than absolutely, a lot of people. Absolutely. More 100%, love, more camaraderie, right. and a built-in buddy. I give that all the credit to my hunger. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just always wanting better and, and you know, so. There's another common thread. Mm-hmm. We had parents that were really engaged and involved with their children yeah. right as you mentioned yeah. how awesome Blessed. your parents have been yeah. i know your parents yeah i know my parents you know my parents never missed anything did yeah. Love it. no little league no pta no piano recital i don't care yeah both of them are there Love it. Love that's it. so cool hey yeah. gabe uh, i was gonna ask you yeah bring it because <laughs> so you said you like, where's the voice coming <laughs> uh, right yes lord <laughs> yes lord <laughs> <laughs> So you got that entrepreneurial spirit, yeah, man. And you said you tried a, f- a few different things, yeah. And, and you've landed on this this amazing restaurant, Thank by you. the way, Blacktop. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd like I'd like to hear a little more about Blacktop and get you to plug it because what what got you into saying this is where I'm going to land? I want to do a restaurant and and then do it to the level that you've been able to. Oh man, you put that like that. Like I I never even thought of it as a level, but. Sometimes I stop and, and smell the roses. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, we've come a long way, you know. Um, I guess just to give you a little backstory, man, I've been part of the industry for since I was 16 years old. My first job was at KFC. Um, and throughout my career, I, I veered off. You know, I was told like, hey, you know, you know, you don't get a lot of options. Go to school and become this. So I did. A friend of mine, old friend, a family friend told me. Let me let me go back a little bit. So when you're in the restaurant biz, man, when I was growing up, it, it was I'm not going to say frowned upon, but it wasn't a career that was shun up in the ranks. You know what I'm saying? It was like doctor, lawyer, you know, all yeah, that. yeah, and yeah. I, that's the time frame I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of instilled in me to like, OK, you need to go to school and figure something out. So I did. Man, a friend of mine told me he was making eight hundred dollars a week, more than I had ever made in my lifetime. You know what I mean? That he was doing it, drafting and engineering. So I went to school and I, man, it took me like four or five years for an associate's, but I ended up getting a job in in an office and it was a great experience, but I was miserable, man. I was miserable. So long story short, you know, 2008 happened. I got laid off and I find myself back in the restaurant industry thinking that I'm taking a step back and really it's a step forward. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So with that said, you know, I've always kind of had this hunger to start my own thing and I didn't have a lot of experience in other things, y'all. You know what I mean? All I knew is that I had restaurant experience. I had a good understanding of food and and a work eth- work ethic. I mean, it's gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> Right, hey, dude, I, I you had can't survive in that world if you and, don't have and, it. And I wanted to be my own boss. Mm-hmm. That, that's all I. That's all I knew, bro. So, you know, when I bought that first card, I think it was like twelve hundred bucks, and that was like the biggest investment ever. And I was scared and I was nervous, and but I took that jump, right? And so when that started, it wasn't like this grand jump. It was like that first year, like it was okay. Year by year two, I was like, okay, I'm making a little money. And I started realizing that it started overtaking the income that I was making at that time. So, you know, then I jumped into there. 
And it's been progressively, like, layers of growth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Year two, I'm walking away from the man. That was my ultimate goal. Yeah. Like, that was the big one. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. check. I was like, man, I made it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm here. I'm here. You know what I mean? It was exciting. It was nerve-wracking. It was all the above. And then, like, year, you know, three, I think I had two trucks. And, you know, God bless my brothers. They were helping me out, man. And we're like, boom, tackling all this stuff. Year five, man, like, you know, we we started getting, like, oddly enough, publications and stuff like that. So year five was also, too, a place where I was ready to grow some more, right? Like, I had mastered that food truck game, and I was like, there has to be something more. And we were getting a good response from our food, so... You know, I was like, man, if we're getting a good response from the community that we're serving right now, imagine if we did it at a higher scale. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of my motivation. And and I was telling everybody this. So I was just as nervous opening that $1,200 food truck to a $100,000 restaurant. It was the same feeling of nervousness. Yeah. Is that cool or yeah. what? So yeah. all that tells yeah. me is next time it's time to grow, I'm going to have that same amount of nervousness. Mm-hmm. And it just you just need to ignore it and go with your gut, yeah. right? And yeah. trust yourself a little bit and bet on yourself. I've been doing this, this, this run yes, sir. for 30 years. Congrats. 30 years, actually 31 now, since I had a paycheck. Yes, sir. You constantly keep reinventing yourself. 100%. Like almost every day. Yeah. Now it doesn't mean you're changing course every day. Yeah. But every day you're you're evolving as a person. You're bringing people in that, and you know what? That's for me. Yeah. It's the hardest part. Yeah. Hey, hey go I on. can. Oh, go ahead. No, no go. Man. No. I was going to ask him. We're running short no, on yeah, time, but ahead. I wanted to cover some food. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Yeah. Because this is a foodie. I special. hope I answer your question. By the way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I hope I answered that question. Now, your brothers are still helping you, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, man, still, Michael yeah, just last yeah. Week. yeah, man, they still yeah. help me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, like, I'm grateful to them. So I've been going to your restaurant for quite some time. Thank you. And I started getting turned on to the vegan menu. Yes, sir. A lot more because mm-hmm. the wife and some dietary restrictions she has, with some, mm-hmm. you know, and then I'm starting to really suffer from dairy allergy stuff, too. Okay. It's really starting to hit real yeah. hard. And, and uh, I got to take my... I have to make decisions when I eat. Yeah. <laughs> like, do I want to die yeah, tonight? Yeah, or do I, wanna... I can't have that donut. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I but uh, the, your your vegan food, out of everything else I've had anywhere else, just stands out. Wow. And the Vampito yeah. tacos yeah. that are, are vegan. Yes, sir. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. So I the, the, the big reason I wanted to bring you on today yeah. is to talk about that because sure. I think more people need to know about your vegan menu yeah. and what it offers. Cause I know there's a lot of people that are starting to, to either realize they have a dairy allergy or yeah. it's just maybe something they want to move health away conscious. from. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, yeah, there's a, mm-hmm. and, and it's even, so sometimes I'll even dive into some stuff that has dairy there just cause it's just so good. But yeah. even like your guys' steak fries that you make, I think I'm, I don't even know if that's on the menu, but I asked yeah, for no, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, even that is, it still feels light and wholesome. You know what I mean? Sure. So, but the vegan stuff. Yeah. That is so good. What Thank did you. you? I don't know if that. Look, I'm kind of new to that game, so yeah. I don't know if that always existed, or is it something that you you brought in uh, to the restaurant out of necessity, out of request, or yeah. was there something more behind it? You know, I, and to, I'll start with like Tucson and the surrounding areas, Marana and everybody. It, it's an amazing community of artists and food and and chefs and musicians and and but there's also a large vegan community right and it's so easily it's easy to get inspired here right and knowing that we have such an amazing vegan community kind of just glancing at our menu man it, it was just like really i was like man we could have a whole vegan menu if we just it's a flip of the switch with the sauces, right? A couple right. of changes. If there weren't changes to sauces. A couple of ingredients would make them vegan. And yeah. we could have this exciting vegan menu, right? And it's been, like, flying off the shelf. When did, and when I'm did really that happy that both... And, and here's the kicker, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Um, here's the kicker. So I had my employees try the vegan menu. Mm-hmm. And my employees were like, whoa. So if you get non-vegan you know, diet, you know, people with a non-vegan diet, like, 
yeah. liking it, mm-hmm. then of course you know, and we well, that's a win, isn't it? Right, we begin Double a good win. response. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so when was when was that thought process? How long ago? Oh, uh, did I you kind of lean into that? Yeah, we probably had it on. We probably had it now for like over a year, right around a year. And I want to feed everybody, so man. Good. Yeah. Hey, and so it's been, record, we're thinking a good response. I still yeah. got to do the dogs. Yeah. Oh, for yeah, me well, personally. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Hardcore. Oh, like you. Like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm your dog guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your I dog. You haven't dog. tried them. Yeah. You haven't yeah. tried the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. no. You know, nah, it, thank you. In, in, in the vegan diet, I've been diving into it a lot more mm-hmm. just, you know, because we're getting into it. But there's a. It's so refreshing when you come across stuff that's actually good. There's yeah. a ton of vegan stuff oh out my there. God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just like, I, I mean, I'm not going to say names, but I went one place and it was just, it was a burger. And uh, man, I'm like, oh, this can't, this is what, you know, I, I kind of felt bad because I know there's people that have to make that decision. Right. And I'm like, man, is this as good as it gets? But then every yeah, once man. in a while you come across <laughs> something that's just like, yeah. Like, it, in, tr- to be honest with you, truly, I yeah. could eat that every day. You were talking about Thank eating you. pizza all the time. Yeah. I could eat that every day. It's just so good. And I, and I know people in my life were just like, this This is this is great. So I was like, I felt really compelled to bring you on and say, yeah. hey, I, know, I know you got roped into it because it wasn't like, <laughs> hey, I came by and everything. You were asking nah, about bring another man, I enjoy hanging out with you guys. I was just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you got roped in, man. <laughs> but uh, no, I was like, we got to talk about this vegan. Yeah. And if you go and look at your transactions yeah. recently, you're going to see us there. Pretty yeah, I love it. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> I see you. Dep, Samarano, Samarano, Samarano. Yeah. But yeah, no, no. man. Like, and, and me and Black Top aside, like everybody's enjoying the menu. And mm-hmm. oh man, I'm so grateful because like, I guess I wasn't expecting it to have the impact it did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, wow. Like it's like, oh my god. Like you know, people coming from all around mm-hmm. and 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 just back on that note, like I think some people like you know, are trying to add vegan items mm-hmm. to their menu to, like, you know, I, I think in an unselfish way to, like, attend to to have those options for vegan yeah. people. Yeah. You know, I mean, people on a vegan diet. Mm-hmm. But there are places right now, y'all, in town that are doing it like it's bomb. Mm-hmm. Like, you would never know. Shout out to Death Free Foodie, man. She has a vegan market now mm-hmm. where, like, everybody, like, does these amazing, yeah. like, eats. And I haven't attended yet, but it's on my list because yeah. I want to go and try it out because everybody's getting so creative. Mm-hmm. And and they're doing stuff right now with, you know, you know vegan items that will blow your mind. And yeah. I'm blown, and, I, and I'm looking for inspiration everywhere. And yeah. So it's... It, it exists, mm-hmm. right? So. You know, and that's cool about Tucson is there's a really solid this, foodie, foodie. Yeah, this culinary scene here is it's unlike insane. anywhere else I've been. Yeah, and I've been insane. to several different states. Yeah. And yeah. even if you go up north to Phoenix and stuff like that, pfft, yeah, no, it's it's real scattered. Yeah. But here it's just, Tucson's another level of yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like, it's, yeah. it's hey, this is for another it's day, everywhere. but we yes, got to figure out a way to accent that. And mm-hmm. amplify that even more because yeah. everybody talks about local, 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 mm-hmm. and, and then another chain pops up yeah. on the corner. Just here yeah. in the area, and we saw two. We're of them fighting move in. with us right now. We're talking to the yeah. Yeah. bureaucrats and the leaders. Like, how do we really? And it's hard sell. Yeah, it's a hard sell because yeah, you right, know right. the I, money I, in I this industry is way down low. Yeah. I mean, the returns are way down low. Yeah. The investors aren't digging that. Mm. I mean. We've talked yeah. to numerous ones. Are like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. But but nonetheless, we all need those. We need those options. We need those health options. And yeah. so no, we're working behind the scenes, and we're going to lean into people like you, especially as we push this thing forward. That to really buy in and make this happen, we got to get the community to buy in with us. Yeah. yeah, actually, in Tucson, man. Just on that note, like I feel, I'm more worried about the corporate places than I am the. You know, the local places, because the local places have, a, like, a zinc that you can't find in a corporate place. Man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You could go McDonald's, you ain't going to find it there. Well, you they're, know what no, I mean? no. Subway, they're charging $16 gonna, a burger now. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Are they really? Well, they, Shoot, today's I Egg Benedict Day. That means <laughs> insane, you can go out dude. for 20 bucks and get yourself <laughs> No, nah, I wouldn't do that, man. I'm, ha- I'm happy people enjoy it, and, I'm, and I want to do it at a fair price. And, and you know, we use... High quality stuff. With that said, you know, you mentioned you tasted something like we we pride ourselves in using quality ingredients and I don't want to veer from that. And right. yeah. and, and you know, I mean still give you like an affordable affordable meal, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Well hey, 
we got to cut the yeah. break, but it's been awesome Thank you, having man. you here Thank today, you. man. Thank it. you so yeah. much. Thank, Thank you. We'll get Thank you back you. in Thank soon. You. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Appreciate if you're, it. make sure to check out Miranda Foodie. Uh, see what's going on there. Check out the articles. There's some stuff about yeah, Blacktop on there. Uh, and Marielle is Thank a contributor. You. She's here in the studio with a couple other Thank people. You, so again, check that out. Thank we'll you. See you. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. All right, we're back in the studio again. Thank you for the supporters of this program. Uh, you know, Copper Creek Cookies, Sell to Allen, 88 Crime, and of course, we got to throw the the mothership in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're thank you, Live Green Media. That was a fast hour. That just went so went by so quick. Yeah. And just having him having Gabe in here, it was really cool. And then talk about tax. That's we our started recap, with but. taxes. We had Jackie Robinson Day, <laughs> uh, the hot dogs. Yeah. And- yeah. Now we got Now we've Mr. got Tom. Tom Somerville. So just a little background on Tom. We've worked together for a couple years over at the Miranda Police Department, but your law enforcement uh, experience is rooted in other places as well and you've got history somewhere and you've got you've got so much history and so much fun and cool stuff to talk about. You wrote a book. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. It's called Old School: The Police, the Public and the Pranks. Yeah. Yeah. It, and entails the, my 45 years in law enforcement. I did 30 years as a Detroit police officer from 1973 to 03. Then I moved to Marana. I've been here 20 and a half years. And 10 months after I moved here, I joined the Marana Police Department. Did a couple months in dispatch. That wasn't for me. I went into the crime scene unit. And for 15 years, I was a crime scene investigator. Wow. So how much total do you have in? Uh, well, counting, I went back to work a year and a half ago from Rana part-time as a background investigator, as you know, because <laughs> yeah. we worked together. Yeah, we did, yeah. I'm doing backgrounds to try to hire the best people we can get to serve our community. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with that, it's 46 and a half years. Uh, wow. Wow. Thank you so much, yeah, Tom. 46 Thank you, and Thank and you half for years. your service. Yeah. So yeah. it's cool. We You, you stopped by, and you had been talking about the book when, when we were hanging out together and working, yes. doing some work together. And uh, to hear somebody else in, in where we're at you know talking about doing something that's it, it's still a risk right like in a, in a way because you're you're putting out you're putting out a lot of stuff about you and, and other people and things that happened but there's time there's money there's all kinds of effort that goes into it into this yes. book and i think it's just so cool when you get to just bring somebody in who's doing this i've never wrote a book have you wrote a book not a book hey no. scott have you wrote a book that's a negative. It's a negative. So you're the only person in this room, unless the interns. Have any of you guys? No. So you're the only person in here that has not only wrote a book, but it's published. And and yeah. And can I grab it real quick? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I got right here. Oh, look at this. Just just thinking about this. writing a book, Cal. Look at this. So here 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 is here is his book. It's called Old School: The Police, the Public, and the Pranks. Right here. This is awesome. And he's got the shirt on. Yeah. I saw that yeah. yesterday. David did a little PR on that. Dang. That's this so is this cool. is the official. This is so official, man. It's so awesome, but. You know, um, take a look at that yeah, you know everybody says, uh, I have a friend that's written 12 books, and he said, Tom, wow. everybody wants to write a book, but they if they do, they they start it and never finish it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I retired from the police department, I said, I want to write a couple books, and I finally got my first one done, Yeah. and I plan on writing a murder mystery. Uh, oh, wow. So Wow. Very cool. So what's it take? So let's dive into the, the logistics of this, and how, how, does, how does this happen? How does the book... Get done. How do you get it published? What steps do you have to take to make that happen? Uh, first, you have to find a publishing company, and I found a real good one here in, in Tucson. They're on Speedway called Wheat Mark Publishing. Okay. Uh, right by the U of A. I, my next door neighbor has two lady friends that written books, and she suggested them to me, and they were an excellent company. Um, they did all the work. I just sent them the transcript and the photos I wanted in the book, and they did the rest. No kidding. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't speak any higher of a publishing company. I was very satisfied with them, and they're local. So, did they ha- do they handle the editing and stuff like that? They too? do the editing, the proofreading, typeset. Wow. Uh, I sent them the artwork for the the cover, and um, yeah, they they do the whole whole the whole yeah. thing. Are you in that artwork, or is that something? No, that you... I have several people ask me where am I at. On this front cover, <laughs> I was hoping you were this, in there because I was trying this, to look. I'm like, I don't yeah, know. look at that picture though, David. Look a little closer. <laughs> this picture was from the 1920s, and oh, they're all look de- at me. They're See? all Detroit cops, 
Yeah. Um, they were the first agency to use Harleys. They still use Harleys today. Wow. And I have a lot of friends. Well, where are you at in there? And I said, well, first of all, <laughs> picture's over 100 years yeah, old. I wasn't but born it, yet. If I was there, I'm the one that's sitting on the seat. You oh. can't see me. So we should I put thought a, it was a funny cover, and yeah. it, it tells of a lot of the funny stories that are in this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like such a clown right yeah. now. Asking if you, you know, it's only but, over 100 years yeah. old, but, you know, no big deal. There were a lot of pictures taken at that time frame of, of, of police departments with their right. first motorcycles, yes. correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I called it old school because I'll be 72 years old tomorrow. And well, happy birthday. Thank you. And and I grew up in an, in an era and time, which a lot of the baby boomers did, where we didn't have social media. Um, things were so different then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell people that the first person, first time I saw a dead body was when my grandfather died and I went to the funeral home. Um, this book tells of a lot of stories of tragic things that happened in my lifetime that I witnessed or, or experienced where today's world with social media, almost everybody has seen the horrors of what humanity can bring um, with the mass shootings, the wars and other parts of the world. You didn't see that back when I was growing up in my yeah. day because yeah. d- it just wasn't there. Now it's on social media, but these stories reflect on what happened back in those days and how I had to deal with it. And being a white police officer in a city of Detroit, the precinct I worked in was probably 90% black. And I used to get all the time, well, you only stop me because I'm black. And I even told one guy one time that, well, I've been looking for a white guy all night. I can't <laughs> find one. Um, was I, this in the 70s, early this 70s? This was in the 70s. Yeah. I wrote an article for our union newspaper in one officer's opinion on racial profiling. And my command officer, who was a black commander that was a great guy, he said, Tom, I want to commend you on what a great article you wrote about that. Yeah. Because it was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but then dealing with, with the, the scum of the earth, I guess you could say, uh, I've seen people get killed over taking an ice cream, the last ice cream on a refrigerator. No, okay. Or you look at somebody the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Um, At one time, Detroit was having over 700 homicides a year, similar to what Chicago's experienced today. Mm -hmm. Um, But then on the other side, there's a lot of humorous stories in here. Yeah. Uh, Roadkill was a very popular item for us to pull pranks on each other. Uh, And you'd have to read them in there. I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. Uh, I even pranked the New York Yankee one time, mm-hmm. who was a friend of mine, and that's a great story. Yeah. So I think a, you shared that with did, us one time. Yeah, yeah. That's worth reading the book you got, for yeah, right that there. Right there, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, it was. It kind of was my way and some of the other cops' way to deal with the horrors that we saw, mm-hmm. and it never bothered me. It's just amazing what people would do to themselves or to other human beings. Yeah, it's um, crazy. And David, you saw some of yeah. that here when you were an yeah. officer. It's crazy. It is. It really um, is. But it's it's a it's a good read because it's 106 chapters. Each chapter is only probably a couple pages long. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a book you can read. If you set it down, go back to two weeks later, you can pick it up, and you don't have to worry where you left off yeah. because each chapter is another story. Mm-hmm. Um, so that makes it an easy read because cops are... Easy-minded people, we don't, <laughs> you know, you've been there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed writing it, and I hope people enjoy reading it. Yeah. So do you have it in audiobook form, too? <laughs> it's not in audiobook form. Uh, unfortunately, that costs <coughs> over $5,000 to do that. What? Um, but it is available at Amazon.com, okay. BarnesandNoble.com. And in two days, I'm having a book signing at the Station Bar, Located on Silver Belt Wade, which is a popular uh-huh. local, yeah. support your local business. Yeah. They have great food there. Um, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., I'll be there signing books and selling books. I even hired a guitarist to come in and play for three hours. It was really good. Nice. Um, so I, I'm hoping some people will show up and, and take a look at it and, and buy it. Yeah. Uh, you with know, tax, it's $21, uh, and I think it's worth every penny hey, of it. Hey, can you throw your headphones on real quick, Tom? Sure. Our guy, Scott, is going to talk to you. So there's a guy in the room here. He wants to chat with you real quick. Okay. Hey, can you hear me? Sure. You know, I was going to going to say, speaking of audiobooks, if only we knew a place that had <laughs> microphones <laughs> and an ability to record things, we could probably <laughs> find a way to and get that charge to you for you 5, a lot cheaper yeah. than 5000 uh, bucks. We'll have to talk about that. He might be that. restricted by his publisher, but we'll see. <laughs> That's right. We'll see. I, I'd love to do that. Uh, there's one story that, Really, unless I tell it, doesn't bring the humor out in it. Um, 
on midnights it would get slow, and I knew a friend of mine that owned a owned bar, and the name of the bar was Gigi's, and the letters G I G I S were on the top, and going by there every night we'd see pigeons sitting up there. So I asked the owner, I said, hey, Tony, I noticed you have pigeons sitting up on your letters there. Would you mind? I know a lot of guys have BB guns, and uh, we use it for roadkill sometimes. He said, Tom, kill them all. He says, those birds poop all over the wall and on the sidewalk. I have to yeah. power wash. So sure enough, one night we shot one. And in the old school days, the police cars had the old <laughs> hood ornaments on them, the little spring-loaded hood ornament. You guys know what I'm talking <laughs> about? So I took this dead pigeon and popped it on that Chrysler Star, and when he drove off, his wings were flapping in the breeze. And this guy pulled up to us in a Cadillac in the summer. And he leans over and he says, Officer, I, I just don't understand how that bird just stays on your car like that. I said, well, sir, it's a train police pigeon. He will not fly away. <laughs> so we left the light, got up to the next light. The wings are flapping on this dead pigeon. And he looked over again. He says, I just don't believe my eyes. That bird don't fly away. <laughs> well, it was dead. So that's that's one of the prank stories that's in here. That's um, good. That's good. It's good wholesome we, stuff. We right? need yeah, a good, good wholesome laugh. family yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 In today's world, we need a, a little. Uh, and, and I make fun of myself. Uh, some of the guys one time gave me a gift certificate for five thousand dollars to Doctor Jack Kavorkian's. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I haven't used it. Uh, Doctor Kavorkian has passed away, so it's no longer valid. <laughs> but that's another one of those humorous things. And Quick there. reference: If you don't know who Doctor Jack was, he <laughs> he would help murder you. He was an assistant <laughs> suicide doctor, and uh, oh. yeah. where was he at again? He was in Michigan. He, he was in Detroit. He was Michigan, in Detroit. Yeah. 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 Oh, that would have been convenient for you. No wonder they had the gift card. <laughs> Didn't include, include travel expenses. <laughs> I mean, there are stories of good police work in here. Uh, yeah. I'm proud to say that I'm responsible for saving six people's lives. Uh, yeah. Four in a fire, uh, one in a car accident. Um, so I'm proud of that. Yeah. And there's some stories of some supervisors that I didn't get along with. So I had to change their names in the book so I don't get sued. Yeah. Um, but that's what the book's all about. Yeah. Yeah. A real, it's like a real life look at it, you know, and it's cool to have something like that, especially in today's environment, right? You're talking yeah. about you were working in an environment that was predominantly, you know, people of color, you know, and and you had to, you had to navigate that that enforcement piece of doing that, and I think it's like there's a lot to learn from somebody that's been through that where you're having 700 homicides a year, right? Like that's a huge crime uh, problem. And I'm assuming you guys helped deter that a little bit during your time with different we tried, proactive. Um, Detroit has really made a comeback. Uh, I yeah. still have my three kids and nine grandchildren live there in yeah. the suburbs. Uh, I've been back there and it's really coming back. And I'm proud to say that. Uh, but it also covers the 15 years I did here in Marana yeah. working with you. Okay. Oh, great. Um, I'm not in there, am I? There, no. <laughs> you had to change the name, David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I thought, well, you, I, I always tell people I've never seen everything in yeah. all these years because uh, you never know what the next call would bring. The officers here, even though Moran is a smaller town than Tucson or Phoenix or Detroit, the street's the street. Mm -hmm. It's the same violence out there. Mm -hmm. We see it every day in the news. Um, but there are stories here, some humorous things. I, I pulled some pranks in Moran, uh, <laughs> some of the girls in records, uh, one of the detectives. But there's also stories. I never thought I'd investigate a fatal hot air balloon crash. I never thought I'd see a tow truck driver have to put a wetsuit on in a desert. But a car ran into the swimming pool over at the Super 8 Motel. Oh. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things I learned about the desert living out here. Yeah. And this tells of the, the good work that the men and women of Miranda Police do for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm I'm proud to have been a part of that, and still proud to help them out get the best hired people we can. Yeah, thank you for your continued service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have also seen just an immense change in technology in policing. When I started, we had one police radio for the two officers. So if you went in to get a coffee, the other officer would have to sit out in the car. Uh, we didn't have computers in the cars. I didn't have air conditioning from 1973 to 1990. Um, and then today's technology, the officers. When I left Detroit, we just started getting pepper spray, and now they have a great, two great things: the the taser mm -hmm. and the cameras. The body cameras, I sure wish we'd have had them because mm -hmm. yeah. it would have saved a lot of complaints. Yeah, because it does protect the officers, and there still are unfortunately bad police officers out there today. Mm -hmm. um, you see it in the news, and why these guys do the things they do, I don't understand. I yeah. don't support it. Um, but for the most part, the men and women out there are doing a great job protecting us. Yeah, yeah. As in most or almost yeah, every yeah. profession, yeah. you have your your bad. You got a bad you doctor know? here you and just, there, and, and, and 
the cops because yeah. we're supposed to be a little bit better than the average citizen, but we're, yeah. we're still the same. Mm-hmm. We bleed the same. The stories here, we see the same things. Um, yeah, it affects you as a person. Yeah, you know, when uh, when I was going through my initial training, there was a conversation we'd have often about headline, right? Like, what do you mean about headline? Well, headline was the action you take on what's happening here. Is it going to be a good headline for the news oh. or is it going to be a bad headline for the news? Like, and it, it was because you said social media and everything has magnified things times a thousand. So, you know, all these like really bad atrocities and, and murders and stuff like that have been happening in society it, it, since it, since its existence, yeah. but only over the last like decade or a little more has it been magnified to where people are exposed to it at such a level that it creates it creates this feeling of constant negativity, right? And I think that that's something that's gonna we're probably gonna talk about in another ten years. Like, yeah, that probably wasn't a good idea, but you know, just going back to all the changes and everything and what you've seen. We talked about the headline now because of all the technology that exists because every single person here is potentially a news reporter or can provide video access and stuff like that. But going back to that, the body-worn camera, when that came into play, because I, I was actually a cop for a little bit when we didn't have them. And then when we got those, game changer. I thought it was a, one of the best technological mm-hmm. advances because mm-hmm. you throw out the complaints because those would still come in. Sure. Oh, that officer said this to me. Oh, did he? press play yeah that didn't happen yeah. right or you need to go and look at some something happened in the call you can't remember right right because you guys had to do it off of memory right yeah, we did it was a different time then I, mean, I always lived by the rule my dad taught me treat people the way you want to be treated right uh, if you do that then you don't have any worries exactly and if you're honest with everything you make a mistake and i've made mistakes admit it mm-hmm. and live with your mistake and, and own up to it yeah um i wasn't perfect in this job um but, but I, I did the best I could, and I treated every day like it was the most important day that I worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I treated people with respect, dignity, didn't matter who they were, what their uh, their, their ethnicity, uh, their, their preferences, mm-hmm. what they want to be called. No, you are a person just like me. And most of the time when we dealt with people, it was at a pretty much a bad time in their life. Yeah. 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 Like the worst worst. day of their life in many cases. I I was a member of the Detroit Police Honor Guard for 25 years, and I performed at over 300 funerals for cops, mostly retired, but I did 32 in the line of duty deaths. And the family would come up to us after the uh, the cemetery, folding the flag, firing a 21-gun salute, and all they had to do was say thank you. And and that just meant the world to us. Yeah. Um, I had a lady one time that I was on an airplane going back to Detroit, Midway Airport in Chicago, and she saw me put my overhead bag and noticed the, the logo on it was from the National Law Street Memorial from Washington, D.C., and she said, uh, is that from Washington, D.C.? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, oh, my brother was killed in a line of duty. And I said, oh, here in Chicago? She said, no, Detroit. I said, what was his name? And she said, Michael Bousset. Oh, was he a sergeant, red hair, 7th Precinct, got killed interrupting a burglary? This was over 20 years ago. She said, did you know my brother? I said, no, but he got killed in the line of duty serving the citizens of the city of Detroit. And I said, I did the firing of the 21-gun salute and folded his flag. Wow. And she started crying and wanted uh-huh. she could give all because she recognized that bag. Right. And I said, we don't forget those that are right. that are serving the community. Yeah, yeah. They need to have so, you at the academy, Tom. Has there, well, that ever come up? Uh I'm a member of the Boys in Blue Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club, Mm -hmm. and we're like a hundred club where we support family members Mm -hmm. of first responders seriously injured or killed in the line of duty. Uh, For instance, Kyle Lorenz, TPD officer that lost his leg last year, uh, he was the first recipient where we gave a monetary award and a certificate and a flag to Kyle. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Saturday we're driving down to Benson. There is a... uh, Border Patrol agent that was killed en route to a call a couple months ago. He crashed his SUV. Mm, yeah. We're presenting his widow with a with a monetary donation and and a plaque. Um, so that's what that's, we do. That's incredible um, to help out yeah. the families. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, if you're listening and you're a police officer, or even especially new, I mean, check this book out. I mean, anybody should read it, but in particular that I think there's a lot of value in that. And and then hearing you talk about 
what really matters and how to approach things today is really good. If you could, one more time, tell us what's going on on Thursday. Thursday at the Station Bar and Grill on Silver Bell at Wade. Uh, Wade is about a half mile north or west of Cortero Roads. Uh, I'm going to be signing books there. I'll have books for sale. There's going to be music. Uh, and they have a great food and, and drink selection there. Yeah. I'd love to see anybody come out and um, autograph a book for you. And All it's right. 4 to 7. From 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Can I get one of those books signed today? Oh, I've, I've got one for you. Oh, my man. <laughs> my man. Tom, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on this. This well, is it's a, my honor. I appreciate the time. Thank and, you, and, 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 um, I didn't write this book to make money on it. I'm going to lose money on it for what it cost me. Mm-hmm. I don't care. It's just to get the stories out there so people can enjoy reading um, about what street life is like back then and yeah. what it's like today. And hopefully they'll get a few laughs out of some of the, the pranks. Yeah. Can I can I ask you, was it, was it um, I hate to use the word therapeutic, but for the lack of a better word, was it therapeutic for you to, to, to write this? Not, not really. Um, I just enjoy it. I've been getting remarks from guys that have bought the book back in Detroit, and they read it in one day because it, it's a it's fast It's just that read. kind of read, yeah. And, and they, the comments they make, uh, well, Scott Bennett, David, you know him. Yeah. He's, I didn't know you knew how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> but from the, the guys and girls that have read it that I worked with, they, they said, you know, you brought back some good memories. Nice. And, and they enjoyed it, and that's why I wrote it, just so yeah. yeah, something good in this world instead of, uh, even though it's got sad stories in it, mm-hmm. uh, I wrote it just uh, for the enjoyment of the reader. Beautiful. That's so. good. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're going to close this show out. Um, hey, Tom, I got a... Oh, we got something. Here you go. I got a quick question for sure. you. Um, I want to make sure in the chat I get the location of the uh, book signing correct. It's from 4 to 7 this Thursday, and where at? It's called The Station Bar. The, the Station. It's on the south side of... Of uh, Silver Bell, right at Wade. Perfect. I want to add that for the people in the chat because we're getting some. Uh, we got somebody that can't wait to get their copy, and they're going to see you there. So I want to make right. sure that we get all of that right. You, this was this was fantastic, gentlemen. Thank you for coming uh, in. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Make sure to uh, check out our podcast platform for this episode here in the next day or two. If you if if you're looking to hear it again, and also we'll keep it on Facebook and everything else for you. And if you're interested in, in advertising here on our program, feel free to reach out. We have open spots. You see we have some ads already on there. And we're looking to expand into a couple more days, which will open up more ad, sp- ad spots. So, again, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday and this and then the future Thursdays. Thank you.